Go ahead and open a 168, and while you do, uh, we'll take a quick look at our calendar. Today, right below the highlighted stuff, we're on class 25, quadratic models, that is to say word problems where quadratic things are what we're going to be playing with. So that's the plan for today. But today's stuff is not on the quest, which is coming up Monday. You can see here it says lessons 19 to 24, and that's what I've highlighted up here in blue. And so uh, I just want to highlight and point out that the material for this coming quest on Monday goes back to two classes before the previous quest. So it's really gone back a ways. And I just want to remind us of all the stuff that we've done that hasn't been on a quest yet. Um, so lots of things with factoring, lots of things with solving quadratic equations, uh, using the quadratic formula, and then graphing parabolas. So I'm going to point to just a few problems in the practice packet. You don't need to take it out, but you guys all know this other document that um, that I gave out on the first day. We haven't really looked at it much in class, except maybe on review days, but lots of practice problems. Uh, again, looking at this uh, highlighted stuff in column C here are the problems that are relevant to this coming quest. So that tells you exactly where you should go to study. And so just looking at a few of these problems in the practice packet, it's been a little while since we've done this kind of factoring, right? So maybe all of these are the box method. And then coming down here, solving equations, solving quadratic equations. Uh, what's the problem with part A before we can do the box? Got to get zero on one side, right? So we've got to do that. Um, and so lots more uh, solving quadratic equations. Then we had, I'm going to skip that for a second and come down to here. Uh, more factoring. Part A is a special kind of factoring. Do you guys recognize this as being a different it's like we had a special formula for things that looked like part A. It has to do with perfect squares. This is a difference of perfect squares, right? Uh, 100 is 10 squared. 4x squared is 2x all squared. And so this guy right here, I'll just put it on the whiteboard to remind us. Um, so 4x squared minus 100, we have this nifty little formula that said, hey, if it looks just like that, a difference of two perfect squares, you put the one thing that's being squared in the one parentheses at the end here, right? 100 came from 10 times 10, 4x squared came from 2x and 2x, 1 plus 1 minus, and that one's done. And so there's going to be a couple problems on the quest that involve this specialized formula, but you got to know how, it's not enough to just know how to use it, but you also have to recognize when to use it. Um, okay, uh, one other thing about factoring. Uh, in part D, what kind of factoring is going on here? It's the greatest common factor. I mean, that x to the seventh is quite intimidating, right? We haven't done anything with x to the seventh except for maybe pulling out the greatest common factor. What is the greatest common factor here? Nine and x to the three. You can't take out any more than three x's because that's all you have to play with in this term, right? So greatest common factor, that kind of factoring. Um, and then the last topic I want to point to is uh, graphing parabolas, which I think is right here. So um, so we had this whole step-by-step -step process. We don't need to worry about all the details, but uh, finding x-intercepts, finding y-intercepts, finding the vertex by averaging the x-intercepts. Uh, we had a symmetric point that we had to plot and then finally plot the points and draw the, the parabola. Right? So what we've just listed there are pretty much all the topics that are on the quest. But for some of us, it's probably been a little while since we've looked at some of these things. And so I just want to make sure that you are, are aware that We've got this thing coming up Monday, and this weekend is maybe a great opportunity to refresh your memory or really learn things well um, heading into the quest. Any questions on that stuff? So this quest uh, just got written yesterday, and I can tell you that it is tough but fair. As long as you are prepared, you will do well. But if you are not prepared, you will do very poorly. Okay. you got to know your stuff here. Okay. So uh, I think that's that. Let's come back here. We're starting on page 168 today. 168 today, like I said, is about um, word problems where quadratics are the things we'll be playing with. 
Uh, the activity uh, in this section is really long and then there's a bunch of even more practice and I think it's super important for you guys to be practicing with this and not doing a whole lot of listening to me talk about this. So I'm just going to blitz through this one example just to give you a flavor for uh, how these problems generally work. But I expect that during the activity, there are going to be a lot of questions. And if you get stuck, if your table gets stuck during the activity, don't just sit there waiting for me to do my rounds. Raise the flag, and I will come over, and we'll get you unstuck. But we want to use all of our time uh, productively today for sure. Um, OK, so here's the problem in number one. It says you have a box. Uh, uh, let's go back here. Um, so we're going to make a box with a square base and no top. That's the right-hand picture by taking a square piece of cardboard, that's the left-hand picture, and cutting out four-inch squares from each of the corners. So start with a piece of cardboard, cut out a square from each of the corners, and fold up the sides, and that's going to make us a box. So here's my piece of paper cardboard thing. It's supposed to be a square, and this is a rectangle. And we're going to cut out four squares, one from each of the corners, and we're going to fold up the sides. And if we do that, you guys see the picture on the right-hand side up on the screen. It um, goes from this 2D piece of paper to a three-dimensional box with no top. Yes? All right, so that's the idea. That's yours to keep. Hooray. Um, okay, so what we're supposed to do is figure out how large an original piece of paper we should start with. Right? Think of all the things you could store in that. Not, not water anymore, but so, so we're starting with this original uh, square, and we've got to figure out how big it's supposed to be so that when we make it into this 3D box, it can hold exactly 100 cubic inches of stuff. That's the goal, all right? So I want to know how big should I make this original square so that the new guy holds 100 cubic inches. Okay, so uh, just running through, like I said, we're going to blitz through this. Part A says we introduce a variable for the side of the original piece of cardboard or the original square. So B is the length of one side of the square before it's cut, and we'll, um, we'll measure that in inches. When we say that the box is supposed to hold 100 cubic inches, what geom uh, geometrical word are we talking about? Volume. volume, right? Holding 100 cubic inches is volume. And what's the formula for the volume of a box? Length times width times height. Yeah? Okay, so we've got that formula here. Volume of the box is length times width times height. And we just have to identify what those different characteristics are. I'll label over here on my original piece of cardboard that B was this distance from here to here. It's a variable. We just defined it. And so when we talk about finding the length of this box, say right here, it isn't the whole B because we had to cut out four inch squares from the original uh, square piece of paper. So how much is left over? Say this blue thing becomes that blue thing. B minus eight. You buy it? Used to be B. We lose four at the top, four at the bottom. So then this has to be B minus eight right there. Let's call that the length. How about the width? Another B minus eight, right? Because it's a square that we started with. Okay, and then the last thing is the height that's uh, drawn in this picture right here, and it's labeled with the four. Do you buy that the four inches is the height of this box? Four is what we cut out. So do you see that that black line segment actually came maybe from a, a line segment like that? That's what gets folded up. And so if we're cutting out four inches, then that, that's exactly what the height will be. Okay, so I think we've got our length, width, and height. Uh, B minus eight, B minus eight and four. So that is written down here. Length times width times height, b minus eight times b minus eight times four. And that is supposed to represent the volume of the box. And I want that volume to be 100 cubic inches. That was given in the problem. So now we just change the v into 100. And we get this brand new equation down here. Now let's go ahead and distribute that uh, everything through in that equation to see if it looks a little bit more familiar in a different form. So distributing here is a two-step thing. First, multiplying the b minus 8s together, and then at the end, we're going to multiply by 4. So multiplying the b minus 8s, I'll highlight it. That gets distributed here. 
either the lobster claw or foil or just distribute, however you do it, and then multiply everything by the four that's sitting on the outside. And so eventually we get around to this equation right here, okay? That should start to look familiar because of that B squared. That B squared is our telltale sign that this is a quadratic, and we have a whole theory of ways to solve quadratic equations, okay? So in this case, um, again, you're going to want to get zero to one side, so we've done that here. We're just looking at the broad stroke. Don't, don't worry about the details. Don't try to follow the numbers now. You can read it later. Um, what can you factor out of everybody after you've gotten that zero? Yeah, four goes into each of these guys, right? And so when we factor the four out, we get b squared minus 16b plus 39, and then maybe the box method or some other method, your, your choice. And it turns out that uh, that guy factors as a b minus 13 and a b minus 3. And so then we set each of the pieces equal to zero. Common question, what happens to the four? Um, the short answer is it's irrelevant. The more detailed answer is, okay, no problem. I'm going to set B minus 13 equal to zero. That's uh, here. I'm going to set B minus three equal to zero. That's here. And I'm going to set the four equal to zero. And that's fair. Just set every single factor equal to zero. Uh, how much is B that makes this thing zero? 13, how much is B that makes this zero? Three, how much is B that makes this zero? There isn't a way to make that equation true, right? So that equation has no solutions. It just doesn't contribute anything. And that's why the four was irrelevant. It just doesn't, um, I, don't, I don't even know if I'd say that. There's no Bs. It, it's, it's certainly imaginary. I don't know if I'd say it's an imaginary number. Um, okay, so then uh, our two answers are sitting right there, 13 and three. But the last piece of this, and this is an additional piece to us here, is that we got to make sure that our answers are actually reasonable, given that this came from a real problem, like a physical piece of paper got cut up. Um, B is supposed to be the side of the original square. So a 13 inch square, 13 by 13, or a uh, 3 by 3 square. So OK, great. So if you have a 13 by 13, and you cut out a 4 from the top and a 4 from the bottom, how much is left from that 13? Five. So five by five by four, that's exactly 100 cubic inches. That works perfectly. But suppose that you have not a 13 by 13 squared to start with, but a three by three squared to start with. And you try cutting out four from the top and four from the bottom, what happens? You can't do it, right? You, you, you've run out of paper. You don't have four inches to cut out on top and bottom. You only started with three. If you carry the calculation through, though, something funny kind of happens. Suppose that you just start with a three and you subtract four and you subtract another four. What do you get just as a number? You get negative five inches, which makes no sense physically. But in terms of the algebra, if you have a length of negative five and a width of negative five and a height of four, the volume is in theory exactly the same hundred inches that we had before, which is why it came out from the algebra, but why we have to reject it from our solution. So um, so you can just say, uh, where is it? Uh, here. So B equals 3 gets rejected. So just make sure that your answers make sense in the physical scope of these problems. OK? All right, last thing before you guys jump into the activity. Um, on the quest on Monday, I want to be crystal clear. So we had. Um, I think three distinct ways to solve quadratic equations. One of them is what we just saw where we factored and set each piece equal to zero. Yeah. Another way, I'll write, I'll write this over here on the board. Um, if, I, if I gave you something, oh, let's write it over here. If I gave you something like uh, 3x squared equals 12, you could solve for the x squared part by dividing by 3. And then do what to both sides to solve for x? Let's take the square root, right? And so this was another one of our techniques. So what's the answer here? Two, right? Square root of four. Any other answers? Does negative two work? If you square negative two, does it work? And give you it does. So it's really easy to miss that when you take the square root. But this is something we talked about way back when. When you take the square root. Plus or minus is good. 
when you take the square root, you've got to put in that plus or minus. But this is not factoring, right? We just solved a quadratic equation in a different way. That's not factoring. That's taking roots. So that's a second method for solving quadratic equations. And the third one is really probably the most powerful of all, and that's the quadratic formula, okay? And the fact is you could use the quadratic formula to solve every single quadratic for, uh, equation in the universe. But on the quest on Monday, I'm going to force you to not use the quadratic formula on certain problems. I want, us, I want to make sure that you know how to do this square root idea, and I want to make sure you know how to do the factoring to solve quadratic equations. So there will be a problem on the quest that says use the quadratic formula to solve this thing. But there will also be several problems on the quest that say solve these quadratic equations. You may not use the quadratic formula, which is sort of a strange thing for a math teacher to say is here's the most powerful tool that you could use on this and I'm taking it away from you. And it's because I want to make sure that you know how to use these other ways to solve quadratic equations. Okay, any questions on that? Okay, so study hard this weekend. Um, all right, so activity begins on the next page. Like I said, I expect people will get stuck. Raise the flag. Don't wait around. Let's see how far we can get through this big activity.